Welcome back. This is Dr. Me at the Actuarial Academy. We have a problem where an actuary models the length of time until a volcano erupts as an exponential random variable with mean alpha. The Hawaiian island Maui has n independently erupting volcanoes and we would like to help this actuary find the expected time until the first eruption. So we need to know a few facts before we tackle this problem. First one is if we have n independent random variables, each distributed with common density given here, 1 over alpha e to the negative x over alpha, which is nothing but an exponential random variable with rate 1 over alpha, then if you were to take the minimum of those n random variables, they would be distributed also as an exponential random variable with rate n over alpha times e to the negative n over alpha times x. Fact two is, so this is an immediate consequence of fact one, is that each of the random variables above has a common mean of the inverse of one over alpha. And we're talking about the x1 through xn here. So you always take the inverse of the coefficient of, of e here to get the mean, so that's alpha. And fact three says the CDF of an exponential random variable with mean alpha is given here. 1 minus e to the negative x over alpha. It's something you should be able to produce on demand. And fact 4 is just something that follows from the probability, the complement rules, that the probability that a random variable y is strictly greater than y is equal to 1 minus the probability that y is less than or equal to y. So to, to solve this problem, we will begin by deriving the CDF of big Y. So the CDF of big Y is given as follows. It's equal to the probability that big Y is less than or equal to some fixed Y, which is equal to the probability that the minimum of those n independent random variables, x1 through xn, is less than or equal to Y. Now, let's use a little bit of logic here. The probability that the minimum is less than or equal to Y can easily be translated in mathematical terms using the complement saying that, well, that's equal to 1 minus the probability that all of them are greater than or equal to y. That's why we use the complement rule, and it makes the math much, much easier. Okay, and that's exactly what we have written here. The probability that the minimum is less than or equal to y is equal to the complement, that is, 1 minus the probability that the minimum is actually strictly greater than y. So if we have at least 1 less than y, then this event here would actually be satisfied. And by independence, we get that each one of these has to be greater than y. If the minimum one, if the minimum of these n random variables is greater than y, then each one has to be greater than y. And of course, we use independence here to do this. So there we have it. So 1 minus the probability that the minimum is strictly greater than y is equal to 1 minus the probability that the first one is greater than y, the second one, and all the way down to the nth one. And again, we use independence to do that. So here we're going to use fact four. So this is the probability that a random variable is strictly greater than some fixed value y. Well, that's just equal to one minus its cumulative distribution function. So the cumulative distribution function is given up here. So what I'm going to do is keep the one minus and just take one minus the cumulative distribution function here and just rewrite this very simply as e to the negative x over alpha because that's the CDF of an exponential random variable with mean alpha. Okay, and using algebra, that's equal to one minus e to the negative n over alpha times x. Well, that implies that our density function our probability density function of y, which is what we're trying to find here, because we actually want to find the expected time until the first eruption, so we need to find its density. It's just a derivative of what we found previous. It's just a derivative of the cumulative distribution function, which is equal to the derivative of this, which is equal to n over alpha e to the negative n divided by alpha times x. That's an exponential random variable with rate n over alpha. You should be able to recognize that immediately, which implies that 
the expected value then of y is just the inverse of what is in front of our constant e. So the expected value of y then is just equal to the inverse of n over alpha, which is equal to alpha over two, uh, alpha over n, excuse me, and that's the answer. So just to add a little bit to this, this should make sense because if we have an exponential random variable with mean alpha, and we'd like to find the minimum of those, then it should make sense that the actual mean should be less than alpha. And it turns out for the exponential random variable, it's actually divided evenly among the time frame, so it's actually alpha divided by n. Thank you very much.